Dr. Cook here. I'm going to be talking about how to handle your timeline. As you think through your troops and your time analysis, I want you to remember that your operational time to conduct your operation itself isn't every bit of time you have. Okay, so that's equal to the amount of time you have available. So from receipt of mission until you're supposed to be done, that's how much time you have available. We've got a bunch of things we've got to take out of that though. All right, we can't just use all of that, right? One, there's some unusable time in there. All right, we might have some restrictions on what we're doing and we just, we're not allowed to do anything during that time. Maybe the company commander told us, uh, you know, we're, nope, you're not allowed to LD until whatever time and, and we're gonna take that off the plate or you're just given other tasks. You're in the middle of another mission you're finishing out. So you don't always have that available. You got time that you gotta spend planning. At some point you gotta sit down, look at the map and, and have some time to yourself to create the plan. There's going to be briefing times, right? You're going to have to go to the company op order. You're going to have to back brief your company commander. You're going to have to issue your op order to your platoon. Uh, there might be some other briefing in there. Your company commander might want to grab you and take you with them to go to the battalion op order brief or back brief with the battalion commander, which normally the platoon doesn't go. Maybe they're going to take one per time. That's not unusual. But that's going to take time away from you. You got rehearsal times, right? So you got to spend some time with your platoon rehearsing key tasks that you're going to do, and that's time that you can't spend moving in, in, in out on the objective. All right, there's going to be maneuver time. How long is it going to take you to get from where you are now to somewhere near the objective to actually execute the mission? There's sustaining time. You're going to have to stop and eat, eat chow. You're going to have to do maintenance on your vehicles, maintenance on your weapons. You're going to have to uh, stop and change socks and take a break, pick up water, refill water, uh, whatever it takes. And then you're going to have unforecasted time constraints. Now, they're unforecasted, but you know eh, some things are going to come up. So you might want to add a little slop into your schedule. Um, hey, if something goes wrong, if we get out there and uh, the underbrush is just thicker than we thought, we're moving slower than we are, we're still not thrown off on our timeline to get where we need to be. All right, as you think through your operational timeline, all right, those things, uh, it's part of your coordinating instruction. All right, and you got to think about all the things that affect your unit, when they're going to happen, where they're going to happen, and who needs to be there for them. And that's what you list off in your timeline. All right, that includes things like uh, briefings that people have to go to. When are you giving your company op order? When are you going to do uh, a back brief with your squad leaders? When do you have to go give back briefs to hire? Things like that. All right. Rehearsals, all right, when are they, where are they? You might have more than one rehearsal. Maybe we've got time to go use a, a live fire range and do something there, and that's separate from we're gonna you know, put some tape on the floor and, and practice our movements, or we're gonna go somewhere else to do our breaching rehearsal. Maybe we've got a, a rock drill rehearsal, right? Probably wanna break out squad rehearsal time, which you might need three locations for each squad, or you just give them the time, tell them to find their own spot. And then where's the platoon rehearsal going to be? So those, all those things have to happen, right? Supply draws. Those are usually in different places, right? You can't get all your supplies in one spot usually, all right? So you might have a time that you got to go do ammo draw somewhere. And then you got another time to go get chow. You got another time where you're going to go get your fuel. You got another time that you're going to have to go uh, pick up barrier materials somewhere. Whatever it is, go to those right places and who's going to go. And then you've got... Uh, enemy actions, if there's anything you know about them, all right, that you can put on there uh, to keep track of it, as well as your actions against the enemy when you think they're going to happen, all right. Times of significant weather, you might want to list that right out in your timeline, right? Like, hey, we know that um, we're predicting uh, rain showers are going to come in and start somewhere around 5 p.m., right? So we can list that out, that that's when we expect it to happen, all right? Rain is going to lift somewhere around this other time, We uh, things like that. All right, and then your operational timeline and sequence of events. When are we going to LD? When do we think we'll arrive at the ORP? When are we taking a rest break? Uh, when do we plan to go out on the leader's recon, come back from the leader's recon? When are we going to cross a phase line to move into attack positions and support by fire positions? When are we going to initiate the attack? Um, and then when do we think we're going to be meeting trucks afterwards to load up and and ride back to uh, the next assembly area for follow-on missions. Whatever that is, you got to lay all that out. All right, we got two battle book pages related to timeline. All right, the one of them is a grid. We just list out all of our time hacks, description of what the event is, where it happens, and who needs to be there. Because usually it's not everybody does everything, right? Uh, the platoon sergeant and designated soldiers are going to go pick up 
uh, certain supplies, right? First squad is going to go pick up some other supplies, right? Uh, the entire platoon needs to be there for the op order brief. Um, only squad leaders and the platoon leader and a platoon sergeant need to be there for a rock drill. Um, whatever it is, who, who goes, what are they doing? Now, your other page is this timeline sheet. All right, and that's to help you with some of your plan and also help everyone see how all these different pieces fit together, right? Because the timeline matrix is just going to be in order, every single thing all mixed up. All right, so here's an example of that um, sheet where we've got a line here and we're broken them down. And this, this is a good way to help you think through it, but also to show it to other people and visualize. So we've got events that happen with hire, events that are operational, things for planning, things for enemy, and things to do with your light weather, right? From the left side is time now when you receive mission. On the right side, we go all the way to mission complete. However long that is, divide up the time uh, and put a scale across the bottom if you want. Here's an example of that all filled out. All right, so you can look at this a little closer. Um, I'll give you the, the slide deck um, as a PDF so you can look at this without uh, just the video. But you can see on the left here, we start out with, hey, we received the mission, there's a warrant on there. So we've got higher things like back briefing the company commander, when is the company op order? And we've got guidance from the company commander about a no later than time for attack and LD. All right, so I've marked those off so that I make sure my plan uh, obeys those. Then we look at operational things that we're doing, right? Like we gotta make a supply draw. We've got travel time there. So when do I plan to cross the LD? All right, my plan, not the company commander is no later than, all right? And it is earlier than what the commander told us. How long is that gonna take us? When do we think we'll hit the hit the ORP, all right? When are we gonna to move to attack positions? Then we've got the attack. Planning things that are gonna happen. When am I putting out the Warno? When's my op order? Maybe I should have marked off some time there to write op order and mark that off when I'm doing that. Rehearsals, PCCs, all right, leaders recon. I, kind of, I listed that as a planning thing, right? That could be operational, it's up to you. Um, and then where's the attack? I drew a big line all the way down because that's an important thing. I want to make sure everything, I can see that on every line where it's going to happen. All right, enemy line. All right, we don't always know a lot about the enemy's timeline. We're making some guesses. Maybe Intel has given us information about a key leader will arrive at the target house at a certain time and we expect the meeting that they're having to last for one hour. Hey, that's something about the enemy I got to know. All right. Now, in this example, I've said, all right, we're going to initiate the attack, and I've got some information about how long will their QRF take to respond so I can mark out when their reinforcements might arrive. That gives me a window when I can attack the enemy and know that their reinforcements won't be there yet. And then light weather, we, we learned about light weather uh, earlier in the course. We can mark those events out. When is sunset? When is EENT? What's my alum range? When is there zero alum? So I can see... Uh, as I plan my attack, that I want to have it happen during when I've got loom out and uh, not in the middle of the zero loom, and I'm making my movements at good times. Uh, and I got information about the weather, and I can look across all my tasks up and down the column and uh, understand what kind of environment I'm dealing with. All right, so that's some information about how to put together a timeline, help you plan it, and make sure it's all good.